welcome students. We are thrilled to have you here. I'm Susan ha uh, Harker, formerly Susan Sauce, and still actually go by a combination of those. So I run the Diamond Key program, uh, and with uh, my Brit, we uh, work together to provide you with all sorts of opportunities to uh, build your skills and knowledge of jobs and uh, so that you can identify a job you'll love and be prepared to get it and succeed at it. We're thrilled to have you here today to learn about this fabulous internship opportunity. First, I'd like to say welcome to students from all over. We have students from CSUMB, from Hartnell, from MPC. We may have some even from Cabrillo or Gavlon. So we are thrilled to have you all here. We're also um, very fortunate to have uh, Ms. Um, uh, Erica uh, Romero from the Hispanic Association of Colleges and Universities. Erica's the Assistant Vice President for Student Advocacy, and she's gonna tell us all about this terrific uh, opportunity, uh, this internship opportunity. So um, before we get uh, turn it over to Erica, I want to uh, remind you that you do get diamond key credit for today. So you just fill out the survey at the end. We will pop the link in the chat. And so you'll be able to go there. Uh, also remember we have a fabulous target Thursday, four to 5 p.m. this Thursday. It's, go it's about giving and receiving feedback. So that is a really important one, especially if you happen to have a group project these days, which I imagine all of you do. Very important thing to do. So, um, I think that uh, to let you know what's gonna happen today, uh, Erica's gonna chat with you for about 30 minutes, giving you an overview of the internship. Then we're gonna have uh, questions. Uh, and then ab about 10 to one, our Dean of the College of Business, Dr. Sean Cometh will be joining us to say a few words. Uh, you can ask questions through the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, pop them in there anytime. Uh, one of the benefits of having the webinar format is that you can ask questions anonymously. So if you'd like to do that, if that makes you more comfortable, feel free to do that. Uh, and I'm sure that Erica would love to hear all of your uh, all of your questions. So put them in there as you have them and she will answer them either while she's presenting or at the end. All right. So again, welcome to all of you. Thank you to uh, Erica for being here. And I will now turn it over to Miss Erica Romero. Thank you so much for inviting me to join you. Um, I am also incognito, you have to love tech. Um, I even put on makeup, but you can't see that. I did just drop in the chat box my contact information. So that's my email, my cell phone. Uh, the one thing I will ask is if you contact me via cell, please make sure it's at a decent hour, but I do respond to texts and messages. Um, and the haku.net backslash hnip is our internship website. What I'd like to ask the students before I get started um, is can you drop in the chat box what your major is? That way I have a feel for who's here. Um, and while you're doing that, uh, I will share my screen. Oh, and there I am. Okay, so I now have, um, Let's see. Okay. I'm just take a quick look at those majors. Thank you. All right. So I will talk about both our corporate side and our federal side, who we are at Haku. So we're a national organization. We were founded in 1986. At the time, there was a recognition that our historically black colleges and universities did played an important role in educating our African American and black students and needed additional resources to do so. The same for our tribal colleges with our Native American students, but no recognition that campuses that surge large numbers of Latin X students might also need additional resources in order to educate students. And so we were founded in San Antonio, Texas, where we are still headquartered in 1986 to lobby for what are now uh, federally designated Hispanic serving institutions, which all of you are at. Um, and so they're defined as 25% or more full-time enrollment uh, with half of the student population being low income. And there are additional um, resources available for students, um, faculty and staff to access. So we have three offices. Um, my office is in Sacramento, California, uh, two blocks away from the state capitol. 
during the regular year, um, I am actually our state lobbyist. So I work on policy and budget in Arizona, California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. And in the fall, I have the pleasure of speaking to students about our student services side. And I really do wish I had known about these programs when I was a college student, they are fantastic. Um, our DC office houses both our federal government relations office, so my counterparts in DC, and then the Haku National Internship Program on the federal agency side is housed out of DC. Headquarters is home to administration as well as all of our student services outside of HNIP. So our corporate program, our student scholarships, um, our faculty administrative programs are all run out of headquarters. We have over 500 member institutions in the US, Puerto Rico and abroad. Uh, in California, we are home to the largest group of them, over 100, and all of you would be attending a Haku member institution, which is important for the scholarship purposes. Feel free to use the chat to ask any questions. I'll try to keep an eye out. Uh, if not, feel free to just interrupt um, or I'll answer the questions at the end. So the Haku National Internship Program, when we were created, it was obviously to lobby for the uh, universities to get additional resources. But as we looked at the federal government, at the time and true today, we were the only seriously underrepresented ethnic group. And so the Haku National Internship Program was created in order to diversify the federal workforce. Eventually our corporate partners joined us in that effort. And so we now also have corporate internships as well. The opportunities are year round on the federal agency side. So you can do a spring or a fall semester, but I'm going to be honest. Um, there are only three types of students I'm gonna recommend the uh, fall or spring for. Uh, first, you are really on top of things. You are gonna graduate in three and a half. You wanna walk with everybody else. You talk to financial aid and the registrar first. Uh, you take a semester off, come intern at an agency and then come back to graduate with everybody. You're on the opposite ends of things. You need maybe a little bit more time to graduate. And so again, after talking to the registrar um, and financial aid, you decide to um, take a semester off, come intern with us, then go back to work. And the third student is for those of you unfortunate enough to graduate this year in a pandemic with a not so hot job market. We have extended when you can apply to our internship program so that people who have graduated within 12 months can apply to our internship program. So if you need yourself a job, you haven't found one yet, you can apply to our internship program, which is paid, um, and then convert that hopefully into a full-time job. Uh, I just got a question, can I apply for these internships and scholarships even though I'm not a business major? Yes, we are actually open to all majors, um, regardless of uh, what major you are in. I will be honest, some are more in demand than others. So uh, business among them, all of our STEM fields are in high demand. Um, we have Library of Congress is one of our folks. And so library majors, which are very rare these days. Um, and of course, USDA, and I know Juan Alvarez from USDA is on with us. They are one of our largest partners. So anybody in any of the ag fields are welcome to apply as well. Um, and USDA is very large, so it doesn't just include the things you might think about. They also do research. Uh, so it's a great opportunity for you. So we were founded in 1992 to diversify. We now have over 13,000 alumni of the program. And one of the things I do want to talk about, um, and I realize I started without sort of giving you the background I normally do, um, is uh, I grew up in East Oakland in a not so um, rich neighborhood, and that's an understatement. Uh, went to my commuter school, UC Berkeley. I took part every day to go to Berkeley. Graduated, end up working for the assembly for two years, went to LA to do political communications for farmers insurance, came back to the Senate uh, where one day I was at my desk and I thankfully did not hang up. I thought it was a joke. It was the White House Initiative on Educational Excellence for Hispanic Americans. Would I be interested in going to DC to work, at a, to work as a White House appointee? I thought it was a joke, it was not. Um, so I actually served as a senior advisor to the White House Initiative, which is point number one, you absolutely should be networking even now. Um, if I had not networked and let people know where I was, what I was working on, I would not have had that opportunity because a friend of mine was asked, do you happen to know anybody who's Latina fluent in Spanish who is working on ed issues? And he did, he knew me. So I got to go to DC, um, I spent a year there. Um, it was an incredible privilege, but as I looked around, everybody around me had an advanced degree. And I knew if I wanted to get ahead, I needed to go back. And I'd been out five years at that point. 
so I went home to some very understanding parents. Um, both of my parents are immigrants from Mexico. Um, and my parents let me stay with them rent free, um, applied to graduate school, and then went to get a job uh, at the Port of Oakland as a contract employee. And I came home and back in the day, if you got the big envelope, it was you got into a university. If you got the small envelope, you got rejected. And I will never forget, I came home on a Thursday and mom's holding the big envelope from USC, which was ironically my second choice. And she said, Miha, you got into USC. I'm like, that's great. I have a backup. This is fantastic. I'd still not heard from my first choice. Um, I come home the next day on a Friday and um, mom is holding a small envelope. And she's like, well, you heard from Harvard. And I'm like, well, that's okay, mom. I got into USC, I'll be fine. And she's like, well, if you hug your mom, she'll tell you it's the really big envelope sitting in the kitchen. Um, I actually got into Harvard, uh, went, did my master's degree there in public policy. And after I graduated from there, uh, I needed a job. Haku was looking for somebody who had state experience and I'd worked for both the assembly and the Senate had federal experience and I'd been a White House appointee and preferably had a master's degree in public policy, which I just finished at Harvard. So thankfully they agreed with me that I would be a good fit. So I opened the office in 2005, stayed for 10 years, uh, went and did um, the private universities. I represented them before the legislature for three and then came back to Haku. So I've been back for two years and I really enjoyed my time here. Um, one of the reasons I always share this story is particularly for our first generation students, which I am, um, you're gonna hear how competitive these programs are. And I now start to sound like my mom, but the worst thing you can do is not apply because you're afraid you won't get in. The answer will always be no, if you don't apply. Um, but I am gonna encourage you to take the time to really work on your applications because these are some fantastic opportunities for you to get real world experience. Um, it, yes, if you're graduating in December, you can still apply for our internship program. Why would you wanna do this internship? Um, I know I grew up low income. I could not have taken a summer off without being paid. Um, and our internships are all paid. As an undergraduate student, you earn $610 a week. Graduate students earn $680 a week. There are no application fees to apply at all. We do professional development workshops as well as cultural events. I will say right now we are in the virtual space. We do not know at this stage whether or not we are going to be in person in the summer. Um, it, it may be a mix. Um, some folks may be um, in person, some folks may be online, it may be a hybrid. Every university can decide whether or not they offer academic credit, does not hurt to ask. Some of them do. We do monitoring and evaluation. So for some of our students, this is the first time you're away from home. I worked with one of those students. We will check in on you to make sure you're okay. If you have problems with your roommates, we will check in on you. If you have problems in the workspace, we will also work with you. Um, so you're not being left alone when you take one of our internships. Uh, there is, when we are traveling, free travel to orientation, which is always in DC, and then the internship site. Most of our internships are in DC. Uh, but again, this is the one time in life you will be paid to fly to and from somewhere else. Um, right now it's suspended because of COVID, we're not traveling. If we're back in person, we highly recommend you let us help you with the housing. Uh, it can be really expensive in Washington DC in particular. Uh, we'll make sure that you're in your public transportation and that you're in a safe environment. So how do you become a Haku intern? Uh, you're enrolled in a degree seeking program uh, you have finished your first year of college. So for those of you who may be first years, as long as you are taking a full load, you can apply for the summer. Um, 3.0 GPA is recommended, but not required. I will be honest, particularly for our uh, corporate side, it's definitely uh, something they look at. So I highly recommend that 3.0 GPA. Um, you have to be authorized to work in the US. So that will include our DACA recipients, as well as any international students who already have work authorization. And you can apply as long as you've been within 12 months of graduation. So what do you need to apply? And this will answer the question I got in, a, in the chat box. You're gonna visit our website. It is completely online, haku.net backslash hnip. You're gonna give us your basic information, your education section. For those of you who are community colleges, if you attended multiple community colleges, we need to know that. Uh, if you transfer from a community college to Monterey Bay, we need both Monterey Bay and the community college. You're going to add a reference. And this is where from personal experience, I'm going to plead with you. If you are listing somebody as a reference, please make sure they know that. 
Um, if they're like me, they work with many students every year. So it is very helpful if you send us an email, give us your updated resume, tell us what you're working on and what you applied for. Um, and just a brief reminder of something you may have done if you worked with us in the past. That's always nice to have so that you're top of mind if we get that phone call. You're gonna add your work history. And for the federal side, it's not actually a resume, but it is incredibly helpful to have your resume done. And again, another plea because we are a competitive program, I would love to see you all go to career services and ask them to review that resume. It is something that you're already paying through your tuition dollars to so take advantage of the service which is available to you, make an appointment, have them go through your resume. Um, things we find students are frequently leaving off in particular activities. So whether you're volunteering uh, through a community organization or your church, or you're uh, part of a club, it's uh, frequently left off of these. Um, and so I highly recommend visit career services, have them take a look at your resume. Once your resume is ready, then upload your work history. Um, the other thing is for many of us, right? I, as an undergraduate, sold clothes as a way to make it through Berkeley with some spending money. Um, you can find a way to list those things creatively. So, right, I spoke about how I had communication skills. I'm naturally shy and an introvert, which doesn't necessarily come off when you meet me, but that job was actually instrumental in helping me get out of my comfort zone. So there are ways that career services can help you list things like that because I realize not all of us are going to have massive internship experience. You're gonna write an essay. It's only 500 words. The official prompt is on our website, but essentially it's telling us what you wanna do. And that's because up to 90% of our interns are offered a job upon graduation. So you want to keep this open-ended enough that you are not limiting yourself to agencies. So for instance, I met somebody last year who would only work for SAMHSA. That's our mental health organization for the feds. That's all he wanted to work for. He would not have accepted anybody else. He tailored the application to SAMHSA. He got it, um, had a great experience. For most of you, especially those of you who are in those business and STEM fields, um, your English majors, your business majors, your poli sci majors, you can go to any of the federal agencies. So unless you will only work for one agency, please keep it broad enough. At the same time, let us know what sort of thing you're interested in. So we've spoken to students in the past who will only do research, mention that. If you wanna do something more practical, mention that. If you'd like to be out in the field, probably helpful to mention that. Um, you have writing centers on campus. Have somebody proofread that essay. We're only gonna accept about 10% of our applicant pool. And so it's essential that you give yourself every single heads up. Um, it is helpful to visit the writing center, have them review this. And the other reason this essay is going to be important is because uh, these are very much tailored to your majors. So for instance, the individual I mentioned earlier who went to work at the mental health organization, he ended up writing what would become regulations on how to prevent childhood suicide. Uh, somebody who did healthcare uh, worked for the National Institutes of Health doing research on diabetes and obesity in the Latino community. If you're an engineering major, you might actually be working on bridges with somebody. Uh, if you're a kinesiology major, you might be working at Veterans Affairs. If you're into research and ag, you might be at the Department of Ag. Uh, forestry might be at either Forestry or the Bureau of Land Management. So we really are trying to target this for what you're interested in doing afterwards particularly for those of you who are relatively early on in your academic career, it's not necessarily reflected in the courses you're taking. And so it makes the essay incredibly important. Having said that as well, we have students who have applied their first year, get in their first year, go their entire academic career with us. We've also had students who apply their first year, don't get it, keep applying and get it their third year. If you don't get it the first time you apply, please keep applying. Sometimes it's a matter of not having the particularly right fit for you at that time. You're gonna upload documentation. So you're gonna download an enrollment verification form from our website, and it's usually the registrar on campus who fills it out, gives it back, and you upload it. We are gonna ask you for an official transcript and then confuse all of you by asking you to open them, which makes them unofficial. There is a story behind that, just trust me, please. We cannot accept unofficial transcripts. Order the official, open them, upload them. We are gonna ask you for a letter of recommendation from a faculty member. So please make sure one of my regrets in life is I did not get to know enough faculty members. They are incredibly important, not only for things like this, but also uh, for making sure that when you apply for uh, graduate school, 
that you can get in. Um, so get to know more than one faculty member and please make sure you give them enough time in order to complete the essay. We don't actually pick students. So once we have your completed application, we will look at what the agencies are looking for. They tell us sometimes it's down to the coursework what they're looking for. So we will match you with federal agencies. Once we have enough applications, we will send them over. Hiring managers can do phone interviews. Uh, I have been hired twice by phone, at least in the Zoom world. Uh, if I've got videos of others, I can kind of see how things are going. On a phone, you've got nothing. There is no visual clue as to how that interview is going. More importantly, most of us are now only on cell phones. And this is not the time that you want uh, your cell phone to drop. And so you really want to make sure that uh, you see if you can get a phone line from career services. Uh, if it's on the Zoom, um, there are things you can do. So for instance, and again, recognizing I grew up low income, if I were a college student still, I would have been at home doing this in my bedroom. But there are things you can do, like for instance, making sure that your room is incredibly neat, making sure that the clothes you are working are still wearing are still appropriate for a work environment so that you're presenting the best um, view that you can to these interviews. Some of our agencies will actually pick without doing an interview, which is why having somebody review your resume and your essay is so incredibly important. Most of our internships are going to be offered one to two months in advance, but I have seen them offered last minute. And one of the frustrations from students is we are constantly asked, well, did I get an internship? Until the last agency fills their spot, we can't say yes or no to any student because we don't know if you're gonna be selected by that last agency. Um, so if you need to take another offer, if you've received multiple offers, then we will completely understand if you choose to do that. Um, along those lines, we do get frequently asked, am I gonna get more than one offer? Can I turn down the offer? So as I mentioned earlier, we have about a 10% acceptance rate. So it's pretty competitive. Most students will receive only one offer from us. Having said that, if it's not the right offer for you, by all means, turn it down. It should be something you're interested in doing. We have had students who have received multiple offers. Um, in that case, you can obviously select among the offers that you receive. Again, right now we're not doing housing and travel because we're not traveling. We do orientation in the online space. All of you do it together as a cohort um, and that will be available to you. These are some of our federal partners. So for anything that requires a national security clearance, you're gonna think money and you're gonna think some of the criminal justice majors. Um, so uh, treasury, commerce, uh, not listed on here, but Homeland Security, FBI, all of those will require national security clearance. Having received one, they are intense. Um, so unfortunately the application deadline is October 30th. Most of you do not need a national security clearance. So your deadline is February 12th. Most of our internships are in DC, but not all of them. Um, so uh, these are some of the locations that we have available to you. Um, and again, this is a one time in life somebody is paying you to get away. So please take us up on it. It is a round trip ticket. So as I mentioned, you've got the spring or fall if you're either a super senior or uh, you've just graduated without a job um, or you were graduating early. Other than that, I personally do not recommend them. Our most popular is summer. So for that, your early deadline is October 30th of this year. Your regular deadline is February 12th. As the last office that is open, I am going to make a plea with all of you. Please do not wait until February 12th to hit that submit button. Inevitably at about 4.58, my phone goes crazy because all of the students are calling because our website has gone down. It happens pretty much every year. The other reason you do not want to wait um, is that we don't select the students, as I mentioned, the agencies do. And so the earlier we have your application, the more people are going to be seeing it. So you want to complete it in a timely manner. You want to make sure it's a good quality application. So don't rush through it to hit the submit button because you still want it to be a good quality application. Um, among the things that you want to look for, and again, um, is uh, I get asked to look at essays all the time. I'm not the person who selects them. My day job is as our lobbyist. I do this as other duties as assigned, but I will look at essays. Uh, I'm also busy and snarky. So I have sent things back with notes that say, I will absolutely read this as soon as you run spell check. In a program that has a 10% acceptance rate, 
you need to run spell check, you need to make sure you've answered the question, you need to make sure you made a compelling argument. Um, as somebody who's led an ex, I frequently got lectured by my mentors on the fact that we're told not to brag. It's culturally inappropriate to brag. So when I graduated uh, from grad school, I would tell people, well, I went to grad school. And one of my mentors stopped me and he said, Erica, you need to stop. You went to Harvard. You need to brag. So this is the time for all of you to brag about yourselves because you, the agency wants to make sure you're going to be interested in possibly working for them. But they also want to make sure that you are bringing something to the table. And so make sure that essay shows exactly how fantastic you are as a student. Um, they need to be able to read that in the essay. Uh, so I do have a couple of questions uh, for the national security clearance. If you already have one, I don't know that there's a space to note that. Um, but I would, if there isn't on the application, I would send a note to our federal internship program and their email will be up at the end. Um, do I recommend the internship in the spring if you're enrolled as a full-time student? So this is a full-time opportunity. Most of them are not in California. So actually you cannot be enrolled as a student and take one of our internships, uh, which is why I do recommend that mo for most students you're gonna be doing summer. And again, the only way I recommend a fall or a spring is you were graduating early, you were graduating late, you've already spoken to financial aid and it works with your graduation plans and financial aid, obviously. Um, other than that, you're gonna want to do summer. Um, can you take an internship that has nothing to do with your major? So uh, assuming you are offered one that has absolutely nothing to do with your major, you can choose to take that. Um, every year I volunteer with the Chicano Latino Youth Leadership Project. It's an all volunteer run organization. And inevitably after spending a month at the Capitol interning, I have at least one student who comes to me and says, Erica, thank you so much for all you put into this. I never want to work at the Capitol again. And quite honestly, if that's your reaction, I consider it success because you figured it out before you started doing this as your job. So internships are an ability, are a great opportunity for you to figure out what you do wanna do. And maybe you're a business major, but you had no idea that you were actually interested in forestry. Um, so make sure that you are keeping all your options open. Um, I do see offers from the great folks at Monterey Bay. Uh, for interview and resume help. And I know Juan, who is fantastic about this, has emailed all of you and take him up on it because he does great work uh, to review essays for feedback. It is very helpful, particularly if you're interested in the USDA internship, but even not, he will look at your essay. So we have great experiences uh, with our internships, whether they're at the US Mint, the Library of Congress, hopefully you all filled out your Census Bureau. Um, and as an advocacy organization, hopefully you are all registered to vote. Uh, otherwise you can do a provisional if you somehow miss that deadline, uh, but please get out there and vote, exercise your right if you have it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about our corporate partners. So you can apply, there are two different applications, neither has a fee. These are our corporate partners, as you can see, some of them are housed here in California. We do have some that are elsewhere. So for this, it's a one page resume to chnip at haku.net. I cannot stress this enough. When we say one page, we mean one page. Failure to follow instructions and in our world actually gets you disqualified. Uh, Pre-screening, we will go through your uh, resume. And again, hopefully career services has taken a look at it. Um, if you pass what we wanna see, we're gonna do a mock interview first. And the reason we have done that is corporate America in particular, but even our government partners have told us that our students are not interviewing particularly well. Some of this is actually a cultural difference. So for instance, um, I finally remembered to tell you my background story. For us, it's important to start with a connection with students, right? Um, it's helpful if you know that I was also first gen, that I was also grew up low income, and yet I managed to go on to have a great career. Um, but the problem is in corporate America, you don't want to take that 30 minutes or however long to give that background story. They're looking for concise answers. If you have, like me, I did not grow up in an environment where my parents would have done a corporate uh, internship or uh, job either, have career services do a mock interview with you. That is an incredibly important skill. Um, and so if you get a mock interview with us, you actually have to do the mock interview with us first. If you pass our mock interview, then and only then will we send you on to corporate America who will also require an interview. In some cases, during normal circumstances, they would actually fly you out for an interview. Um, 
one of the things that I know trips up students, so we do it now for CLYP students, is we teach them how to dine in a business setting, right? So eating from using your utensils from the outside in, how, where you place your napkin, uh, proper protocol, right? So if you're going out for an in-person interview, these are all things that hopefully Career Services has already briefed you on. Uh, right now, obviously, we're not doing any of that, so all of it is in the Zoom world. Uh, but I do recommend you take the opportunity to do a mock interview. Um, I want to answer a question before I forget. Can I apply for the internship program uh, next year for the summer session if I graduate in spring 2022? Uh, so right now the answer to that is yes, but we also changed our rules. Usually it's only for the summer right after graduation. Right now it's 12 months. I don't know when we will change it back to only the summer after uh, graduation. Uh, you need one reference. Um, make sure it's a faculty member who knows you. And again, I highly recommend getting to know more than one faculty member because you're gonna need more than one recommendation of your lifetime. Uh, so if you, the national security clearance, most people do not need that. Um, so uh, that is uh, the US Mint, Treasury, the folks who are working with money or on the opposite end, um, any of our criminology, uh, criminal justice issues would probably need a national security clearance. For the vast majority of students, you do not need it. So I do wanna talk about scholarships as somebody who's still paying off her master's degree. Uh, life is much better when somebody else pays for your degree, trust me on this. We do still have some scholarships open. Um, right now, the Denny's Hungry for Education scholarship is open. The deadline is November 20th. I included some of the other scholarships uh, because usually they tend to come back and the deadlines are around the same. You have to attend a Haku member institution, which Monterey Bay, Hartnell, Monterey Peninsula are. Um, have a good GPA. Previous internship experience or work related. One of the things we have noticed, and again, I mentioned this earlier, is students are not listing their club experiences or their volunteer experiences. All of that is actually incredibly important to us. Um, so please make sure that it's listed there national or international experiences as well. And I'm gonna talk about an opportunity we have through Haku. This year has already passed. Um, actually, this week we start our pre-conference activities. Next week is our national conference. Uh, we're of course doing it in the virtual space. I know this has bummed out students in particular, but even our faculty and staff, we were supposed to have been at Disney World. Instead, we will all be in our living rooms doing this. Uh, but the Institute last year when we were live in Chicago brought 600 students to Chicago and an additional 1400 faculty, staff and administrators from our universities to our annual conference. So the, there were 2000 folks in one ballroom. It's actually impressive to watch. But for our student track, we did something special. We do everything from professional headshots that you can use. Uh, we do how to interview. Uh, Google does a workshop that's um, very well attended. We don't want you to just finish at your bachelor's degree. We want you to transfer. We want you to get that master's, that PhD, the EDD, the MBA, the JD, whatever you want to do, we want you to go get it. Um, so it is an incredible opportunity. And the really nice thing is we actually offer scholarships. And again, this year's closed. Next year, we will probably open in March. So for those of you who are continuing on, look for the application for a full ride scholarship in March. The uh, scholarship includes your airfare, your hotel, and our registration fees, which include most but not all of the food. Next year, we are at an absolutely stunning resort in Aurora, Colorado. So hopefully we will be live. Um, it is a great opportunity for you to get professional experience. So I've already mentioned our scholarships and the annual conference. The one scholarship that for some reason is not listed um, on there is actually our Lancet scholarship, which we do with Southwest. And I think that the reason is most people aren't flying right now. Uh, but Southwest provides free vouchers. Um, I went to grad school on the East Coast. Um, I only flew out at the beginning of the semester and at the end of the semester. There was no coming home for school breaks. So if you decide to go away to a location that has a Southwest airport, um, they provide free vouchers for you to fly to and from campus. We've also seen some students who use it for their parents to attend graduation, which is always really nice. Um, so that will also, once we're back all flying, um, if you decide to go to grad school somewhere, uh, that's an opportunity for you or uh, for those of you at community colleges transferring. Um, you can post your resume. It is free to post your resume and employers are posting jobs. They're looking through our resume database. So feel free to list your resume there. 
for our regional summits, the closest we're getting so far in California is um, San Bernardino has offered to host us. Obviously that is on hold until um, we are allowed to travel. And then international opportunities. We have uh, study abroad scholarships. In high school, I had the opportunity to do an exchange program with the Soviet Union. It was still the Soviet Union. It was the year before the wall fell and Gorbachev was still president. Um, it was an amazing experience to be there and experience everything live. My regret is that I did not do study abroad as an undergraduate student. If you have the opportunity to do it, I highly recommend it. Um, and we do have scholarships to help pay for it. This is our DC office. Um, rather ironically, thanks to all of us telecommuting, if their line is busy because a DC staffer has already answered it, it rolls over to my cell phone. So at the beginning in the chat box, you have my cell phone, feel free to call me directly. Um, we are on social media on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And again, annual conference is already happening. Um, so student track is next week, uh, but I encourage you to apply next year for Aurora, Colorado. And uh, I've been answering questions throughout, but I don't know if I missed any or if you all would like to ask some in the Q&A box or the chat box. Erica, that was terrific. Thank you so much for all of that information. And uh, I'm so glad that we got the video working for you as well. So let's see if we have uh, any more uh, questions. Uh, we have some in the Q&A. Have you seen those? Um, what's a good way to get to know your professors right now? Uh, can the faculty be a member or somebody who was recently retired? That is a really good question. And if Juan knows the answer to that, he can answer it. I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, so what I would recommend is you email hnip at haku.net and ask them um, for that. Good way to get to know your professors, and I'm sure the professors in the audience can also get that, uh, but I personally recommend office hours. Um, they hold office hours for a reason, um, and it is a great opportunity to get to know them. Obviously, right now, you can't take them to a cup of coffee. Uh, but I have done that with professors in the past where we got to know each other over a cup of coffee. And I don't know if other folks have recommendations on how to get to know your professors. I will. I think that you're exactly right, Erica. I would say to go to office hours. Um, most professors have uh, virtual office hours right now. So they're, um, you know, they have a time when they are just on video, just like this. And so you just pop in for a few minutes. Uh, and I will tell you, from my experience, most of us just hang up, hang around waiting for students to come during office hours. It's not that they're banging down our doors. So uh, go uh, find out when your students, uh, when your faculty office hours are and, and just join. And if they, you don't know, shoot them an email. I mean, um, your faculty are faculty because they care about students. So just shoot them an email um, and, and say, hey, I'm, I'm doing this program. I'm interested in the program. Do you have a few minutes to chat? Your faculty love to hear from you. And I, I, second, I second that, Susan, because um, uh, as a faculty member, uh, send me an email and say, hey, I want to talk about uh, an application or, hey, can you help me with my resume? In my uh, signature line in my email, uh, there is a link for making a Zoom appointment with me even during these crazy virtual times. Make an appointment and we can talk about whatever you need for academic purposes, or for uh, applications, for resume, on how to get a job, or just tell me your story and how you're doing. So we have a question. Are you only filling out one application or uh, for every place you're interested in? So there's one application for the federal agencies, and it will go to all the federal agencies you qualify for. And then the one page resume that gets sent to corporate. And again, you can apply to both federal agencies and corporate America, but they are two separate applications. But if you're interested in the federal agency side, you don't have to send a separate application for every agency. It's just one application. And then the deadline for spring 2021 is October 30th. Is that for federal or corporate? So uh, the corporations are only doing summer. So that is for our federal agencies is the deadline. Um, the, September, the October 30th deadline is also uh, for anybody with a national security clearance. Um, and again, that's purely limited to you're dealing with money 
or you're in our criminal justice majors. For the vast majority of you, you do not need to apply by October 30th. So don't feel compelled to rush. Yes, you will have access to the presentation. Afterwards, I understand it's being recorded. Yes. Can a question concerning the faculty uh, member being somebody who uh, has been recently retired, if they can um, I write a letter of recommendation uh, on a student behalf. From my experience uh, in the past with, with working with students who have uh, attempted to do that is, is a no. Uh, preferably uh, folks from Haku would like that a current advisor, counselor, or professor, uh, you know, compose a letter of recommendation for you. So um, if, if that's available, uh, or if you have a contact on campus who can write that letter for you, um, you know, that would be that that would be best. And if you didn't, if you didn't create a close relationship with, with someone or you haven't yet, you know, just think about the class you did very well in maybe the class you did best in and reach out to that instructor, send them send them an email and, um, and let them know that you know, you're applying, you did well in their class and you wonder if they would write them, you know, write your recommendation. How about this one, Erica, do you see this? Are all the internships located in Washington, DC? So no, we actually have them throughout the US. Bulk of them are going to be in DC once we're live. Uh, obviously right now they're all virtual, uh, but the bulk of them are in DC, but we do have them in California. We've got them in Arizona, Washington, uh, New York. Uh, I think one year we had one in Puerto Rico. Um, so the other thing I will say, I mentioned, don't mention the federal agency, unless you truly are not willing to go somewhere else, our options in California are fairly limited. I'd like to remind you, we are paying for your airfare to and from wherever this internship is. So take the opportunity to travel for free. Um, so unless there are extenuating circumstances why you won't leave, keep your options open. There's another question here in the chat that, um, would you suggest having a template for the, for the professor to fill out when requesting a recommendation? Um, so I'd love to hear what the professors think. Personally, my inclination is no. I would give them an updated copy of my resume. I would tell them what I'm applying for, remind them why I'm absolutely spectacular and why they know me. Um, I would give them all the info they need, right? I'm applying for the Haku National Internship Program. If you want more info on it, this is it. This is what I'm interested in doing. Here's my resume. Here's why you know me. Um, but I find uh, when I applied to graduate school, one of my bosses wrote the most amazing letter of reference for me. Um, and he is actually a much better writer than I am. So if you give them a template, sometimes it actually limits how they're thinking. Uh, so sometimes it is actually better to give them a little more leeway. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, how can you ask a professor for a letter of recommendation or reference? Do you have to wait until an opportunity like this internship and then have the professor tailor it for the opportunity or are there general or generic letters? You can actually do both. Um, some of it depends right on your professor and their willingness to do it. Uh, I had folks who were willing to write the general, like this person's just fantastic, we'd recommend them for whatever. Uh, a lot of the time you do want them tailored. Uh, what they can frequently do is take the first one they tailored and usually they'll just change a few words for it to make it relevant to the next one. Um, but you can ask for both, and it, I think it depends on the faculty member. Okay, uh, great. I will say as a professor that, you know, sometimes after you finish a class, if you did well, you can just go up to the professor and say, hey, um, I, you know, would you be willing to write a letter for me in the future? There aren't really generic ones as much, you know, that I would do, but um, if you kind of let them know in advance, that can be very helpful. Okay, let's see what else we have. To, let's see, do the reference letters have to be from a professor in our university or can it be from one of our scholarship advisors that we keep in touch with throughout the college experience? And Juan has actually worked on this more than I do. Juan, do you know the answer to that? Yes, uh, actually the letters of recommendation do have to be from somebody from your uni current university uh, or institution, uh, I should say, um, just because you know, folks uh, are better up to speed on some of the work that you're doing. If you're a transfer student, uh, I know that that at times can be a bit difficult. Um, you know, the best 
course of advice that we could possibly give for that is to network with your professors, get to know your professors, make sure that get, they get to know you and the work that you're able to produce. Uh, just because um, at the same time as they too, oftentimes uh, become aware um, of different internship opportunities, whether it be with industry, with some of their partners, or just in the community uh, in general, and they too can, you know, reference you or, uh, you know, for those opportunities. So uh, don't be shy in getting to know your professors. Uh, start building those, you know, uh, relationships and expand your, your network. Social capital is very important. And when it comes to uh, this internship in particular, uh, you do, you know, put those uh, things into practice. Okay. Uh, let's see. Will I be able to receive an official transcript in time for the October 30th due date? So I don't know how long your campus is taking. If that is the one holdup, please submit everything else. We're trying to be understanding. Obviously, request the transcript as soon as you can. But if that's your holdup, submit absolutely everything else and then just let us know. Okay. We do, we do also have a question about medical arrangements. So we accommodate students. Um, obviously, within federal regulations, you always have to provide reasonable accommodations. Uh, so we encourage you to. Okay. So for the question about scholarships, um, the scholarship that's due in November is listed on our website. If you go to the Haku website, it's not the easiest to navigate. I'll be the first to admit we're about to change it. But for right now, you can go into the student section scholarships and it's listed there under the Denny's Hungry for Education Scholarship. Um, everybody has different requirements. Uh, so look at the requirements to see if you are eligible to apply for the Denny's Scholarship, but it is live right now on our website. Uh, so to clarify, Haku offers an annual conference students can attend as well as the internship. So all of these programs are separate. You can apply to any or all of them. So the internships, you can apply to both the federal and the corporate internships. Um, you can apply to the annual conference scholarship. And on some campuses, actually, uh, some campuses choose to take students as well out of their own funds. Um, and then our uh, scholarship programs, the Lancetes, the Hungry, uh, the Denny's Hungary scholarships, you can apply to as many scholarships as you are eligible to apply for. Keep a look on our website uh, because there are some great opportunities on there. There's a question that came in on the chat. What, what do you recommend, Erica, if you are scared to apply? It came so again, sounding like my mom, the yeah. worst thing in life somebody can tell you is no, right? I, I'm first generation. I grew up in East Oakland in a not rich neighborhood. Both of my parents are Mexican immigrants. Right, my first language is Spanish, you can't tell every so often, you'll catch a word I can't say in English, it's kind of funny, um, right? So I did not grow up in the wealthiest of neighborhoods. Um, and so to think that I would end up going to Berkeley and Harvard and working for the White House is amazing. But had I not taken the opportunity, I wouldn't have done it, right? It's, it's a simple matter of just finding the internal strength to be able to do this. And for, especially for those of you whose parents, like mine, are immigrants, just think about it. They left their own home country to make a better life for you. This is a matter of, we are paying you to fly somewhere. You are gonna have us as your backup. We're not leaving you alone, right? And so you've got somebody having your back. This is the great, greatest opportunity as far as I'm concerned to get out there and do something different. Um, and again, if you go out there and you do it and you discover you absolutely hate it, at least you knock one thing off, right? I never want to do that, right? I know that I went to grad school in Massachusetts. I never want to know what negative 40 degrees what the windshield feels like again. So I'm not going to live in Massachusetts ever again, as much as I love the experience at Harvard, right? So this really is a great opportunity. Branch out, do something different. Um, this is the time that you can do this. The older you get, the harder it gets, right? I when I went to work for the White House and I filled out my application form for my national security clearance, I actually had to list 12 different addresses in a decade. Um, right now I've had one address in a decade. And so the opportunities as you get older do tend to become more limited because of life circumstances. So take the chance, do it right now. Um, these are some fantastic opportunities. And again, 
we're not going to leave you alone. If you're out there and you find you hate DC, I'm really struggling, how am I ever going to make it through it? Call us. We'll help you figure it out. And you've got a lot of support at CSUMB too. You should know that you can always call my Brit or me. Uh, you know, you've got our, our emails. My cell number is at the bottom of every email I send out. So Juan has put his, his contact information. He is clearly available to support you as well. So we would love to see you guys apply for these. Um, you know, uh, just go for it. Uh, and you know, you, you gotta be, you just got to take a little bit of a risk to go for it. And, um, and we're here, we're all here to support you. So I just so, saw a question. Just to, oh, oh go ahead. Juan. To add to what you were saying, Erica, um, you know, in, in terms of that fear, it's, you know, we've, we've all been rejected, you know, from, from different opportunities that we apply for. Uh, and I can understand how that can become very discouraging. But at the end of the day, like Erica said, it's the worst thing anyone can say to you is no, don't let that discourage you from pursuing opportunities. Um, you know, you, you mentioned the 10% the chance of actually, you know, uh, getting this opportunity. It's like, look, think about it this other way. If you don't apply, guess what? You're not going to get selected, you know? <laughs> so at least give it your best, give it your all. And at the end of the day, you have a base to work from. There are going to be other opportunities that you can use that essay um, you know, and at the same time, it's like the folks at CSUMB are, are offering to, you know, assist you in, in any capacity. Myself and Erica are, are doing the same. So really take advantage of those resources. And again, network, network, network. So for the question in the Q&A, what kind of scholarships would you advise for DACA recipients? Some of our, scholar, all of our scholarships, the requirements are listed by the funding person or funding corporation, not by us. Uh, some of them I understand are now open to DACA recipients. I will be the first to tell you, I think we need to do more around getting more of them open to our DACA and undocumented students, uh, particularly our undocumented students right now can't apply. Uh, but look at the requirements to see if you're eligible for DACA recip uh, as a DACA recipient. Um, also, as a DACA recipient, you are eligible to apply for our internship program, so take that opportunity, as well as the um, uh, annual conference. Um, until we hit that requirement about the real ID for travel, uh, we can still take our DACA recipients. We will also have, depending on what year you are, we will have an event in um, Southern California in San Diego, annual conferences there in two years. So if you're still a college student in two years, Years and you can't fly because of restrictions as a DACA recipient, but you can drive down, make the drive down and attend on a, a scholarship. That's also an opportunity for you, right? You just need to get a little bit creative. Um, MALDEF.org, if you're already not on there, MALDEF has some great um, scholarships for undocumented and DACA recipients. And so does Educators for, for, for Fair Consideration. And I think it's E, the number four fc.org is their address. Uh, so they have scholarships available for undocumented students as well. For our community college students, yes, you absolutely can apply to these. I encourage you to apply. I am going to give you the absolute same recommendation I give. I give it to everybody, regardless of what university they're at. Please make sure that your resume has been looked at by career services and that somebody looked at that essay, do not hit submit without having somebody look at both. Um, and, you know, a lot of your professors will do that too. I will do that for you. My Brit will do that for you. We'll do it a quick, a, a quick once over. I mean, really, and please spell check for all of us. Just spell check. Um, <laughs> so for student, for somebody who has kids, I have discovered that somebody found a way to make it happen with kids, right? Um, they found a family member who was willing to take over kid duty for them so that they could go do a summer in Washington, D.C. That is not gonna be an opportunity for everybody. I will be the first to honor that. Uh, but if you have somebody who can watch the kids who are willing to take them for a summer, or if, right, we will not pay for the housing for the kids, but if you want to take the kids with you um, and you know somebody in the Washington DC area who might be able to provide care, uh, then that would be an option for you. But I do recognize that for those who are parents, this might be a tougher opportunity given that's full time. We have another question in the um, in the chat. I know this might be hard to answer with the current circumstances, but is there any optimism that students will be able to do internships in person next fall? It was my understanding internships are currently online. Right now they're online. So some of it depends. Um, 
I'm gonna be very honest, we're still trying to figure out our own issues with being in person, right? There are, and all the universities are struggling with this legal liability issues with having people in person and if you become sick, what happens? So I think we at Haku are still working through that. Uh, the other issue that we have to work through is that quite realistically, this country is uh, quite divided as to where we are, right? For those of us, we're all sitting in California right now. We're not going many places, right? Most of us are still shut down. Um, if you're in Florida, you're in a totally different environment. And so some of you may end up being in person. Some of you may end up still being in the virtual space. And we at Haku are still trying to figure out how we make that all happen. Great. I know there was a, a question. Uh, this Are these opportunities available just for Hispanic students or for Hispanic uh, students? Great question. And I forgot to say that at the beginning. We are a Latino organization, but you do not have to be Latinx to apply to any of our programs. We have students of all ethnic backgrounds applying to everything. Great, thank you very much. And Juan has has posted a, a wonderful thing in the chat, um, but you just posted it to panelists. You might want to Juan, post that again to panelists and attendees. Over 500 internships currently available for various majors. Um, so we'll make sure we get those um, great website there. So we'll, we'll get that to the uh, attendees as well. There you go, just got to. Okay, any other questions here? This is uh, terrific um, information, Erica. Thank you so much. Uh, great opportunities, folks. You know, we are behind you 100%. I hope you feel all of this support. Um, let us help you. Um, we want to see you do great things. We want to see you go out there and, and go for these scholarships. I know I've had... Um, a student in the past who has done this and was really excited about it. So wonderful opportunity. And thank you so much, Erica, for, for taking the time to, to share this with us, as well as sharing your really inspiring story. So that's, it's, it's really neat. It's wonderful to see uh, all, the, all the, your fascinating career path and uh, the way things go. And I always love to hear how they are not linear and that students, you know, you gotta get out there, try some things and get some, some turns and you, you figure things out, so. Um, Thank you. And for the descriptions of the internships, we're still in the process of receiving them. So there are some previous examples of internship uh, descriptors on our website, uh, but the new ones have not been posted. All right, so um, anybody else have um, anything they'd like to share? So I would, um, I, I, I have some final words for students, especially if you're looking uh, for extra credit and, and diamond keys and so on. But I would, I would like to ask first if, if Erica has something that she wants to add or Juan wants to add or, or Scott wants to ha add. No, thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you so very much, everyone uh, for attending. Thank you for our speakers. Thank you to Erica. Thank you for all of those who worked so hard behind the scenes to, to make this, this event uh, happen. And um, so for students, I would like to let you know that if you are hoping to receive a diamond key credit, or if your instructor has generously offered extra credit for this uh, uh, attendance of this webinar, so please don't forget to uh, participate in our survey, which I have put into the chat. Fill in the a survey, think about this opportunity, let us know what you thought about it, let your faculty know. Uh, send Susan an email, send me an email, send Erica an email about how, how you felt uh, about this opportunity to create this network. We also have at Career Gateway many interesting events coming up, which relate directly to how to make a resume, how to network in these crazy times, how to make your LinkedIn profile. Uh, these events are available at the College of Business, Career Gateway and Diamond Key page. Uh, so I will post a link uh, for that as well. Uh, so keep an eye on these events, come to many of these events, meet your faculty, get comfortable talking about yourself, get comfortable talking to your faculty uh, and get comfortable in this virtual environment uh, so that you can succeed in all of the applications that, that you are going to make 
uh, during uh, during your time in school in school and and afterwards. So I'm so happy that uh, uh, we had this event. I'm so happy that you all came and see you next time. See you soon. Hope to see you guys Thursday. Giving and receiving feedback. Alrighty. Bye folks. See you soon.